In this problem, we're told with what speed must the ball be thrown vertically from ground level to rise to a maximum height of 50 meters. B, how long will it be in the air? And then C, it tells us to sketch the graphs, but I'm not going to do that. So we're just going to focus on A and B. So let's draw an image of what's going on here. So we have this ball, and then we know it's going to be thrown from ground level. So this is our ball. And so it's going to be thrown up, and we know it's going to rise to a maximum height of 50 meters. So it's going to rise up. It's going to hit this maximum height and we know the distance it's going to travel is 50 meters so we're trying to find uh, the speed it must be thrown at so the initial velocity right and then we're trying to find the total time it's going to take it to go up and then down that's going to be what b is so time so let's write down what we're given so given and i always like to write out each variable of the kinematic equation and then determine whether or not we're given it so these are all the variables for the kinematic equations so we have delta y these say delta x, just keep in mind that's for like when you're going in the x plane. We're focusing on the y plane because this is free fall, right? We're going in the y direction. So these say delta y or delta x, just pretend it's delta y. They work the same exact way. So we have delta y, we have v, we have v sub zero, we have a, and we have t. So let's determine whether or not we have these. So delta y is going to be our change in our y. So we do know delta y, it's a distance. We know the change in the y is going to be 50 meters because it's going to go up 50 meters. So we know the change in y. What about v? So we do know this one. It's not told to us explicitly, but it's implied. So we know it's going to be reaching a maximum height of 50 meters. So when something reaches a maximum height, at its maximum height at that instant, right? Because v is the final velocity. So the velocity at the end point, we can set it to whatever we want essentially. But at, the, at this end point, it's going to be equal to zero. Because once something reaches its maximum height, its velocity is zero meters per second. The initial velocity we don't know because they're asking us for, right? They're asking with what speed must it be thrown. That's the initial velocity. We don't know that. Something else that is also implied is the acceleration. So when you solve these problems, free, uh, free fall problems like this, the acceleration is always implied to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. And the reason this is, is because this is the force of gravity and it's negative because it's acting on our ball downwards. It's like pulling it down. So that's that. And then time, uh, the time is going to be a bit different because in terms of this way we're talking about it we're talking about the time to reach the top but in this one it's talking about the time it will be in the air so we can solve for the distance it's going to take to go to the top but what you should know is there's a rule that the amount of time it takes to go to the top is the same amount of time it takes to fall down so essentially if you can find how long this takes right here so it takes it to go all the way up if you multiply by two it's going to be the total time it goes up and down so just just that know that as a rule so i'm going to set time equal to question mark because we don't know Let's start with A though. So with what speed must the ball be thrown? So that's what we want to find. So if you look at our kinematic equations here, notice what we're given. We're given delta y, we're given v, and we're given a. And we're trying to find v sub zero. So notice how we're not given t. And equations one through three all contain t, so we can't use those. So this is the only equation we can use. And notice that all the variables line up. We have v, we don't have v sub zero, but that's what we're solving for. We have a, and we have delta y. So we're going to be using this one right here. We just got to plug in. So we know v is 0 because it's going to a maximum height. So 0 squared is just 0, which equals uh, v sub 0, which is what we're solving for. So v sub 0 squared plus 2 times a, which is minus 9.8 times delta y. So it says delta x, just pretend it's delta y. So 50, right? That's our change in y. And then let's just solve for v sub 0. So I'm going to move this to the other side. So minus this, so minus v sub 0 squared is equal to 2 times minus 9.8 times 50. So if you go ahead and do this 2 times minus 9.8 times 50, uh, you're going to get that this equals minus 980, right? Minus 980. The minus signs will cancel though, so it's just v sub 0 squared equals 980. And then square root of both sides. So, so you're going to get v sub 0 equals the square root of 980. And if you go ahead and plug this in your calculator, square root of 980 is 31.3. So 31.3 in the units we use to measure initial velocity or velocity in general is just meters per second, right? Because we're using meters in seconds. So it's just meters over seconds. So this right here is going to be answer to A. So that's A. Let's move on to B. So B is how long it will be in the air. So the way we're going to solve this one is by, or what we're going to do is solve for the total time it takes to go up, right? 
So the equation we're going to use is this one. You could use any of the ones that contain t. I think the first one's the easiest, so we're going to choose that one. So v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. So the way I want you to think about this, right, if we say, if we set the velocity equal to 0, right, so if we set that equal to 0, because that's going to be when it reaches the top. So it's going to be when it reaches the top, we set the initial velocity to uh, what we just found, right, 31.3. And then we're going to set the acceleration to minus 9.8, as always. And the time, what is the time going to be? Or like, what time is it finding? The time it's finding is the total distance to travel up to here, right? The maximum height. And so keep in mind how I said, if you can find the time it takes to get to the maximum height, the total time it's in the air is just going to be double that. As long as you're falling to the same plane, right? You're, fall, you're falling to the same exact spot you started. So we're just going to take the total time that we solve for and double it. So... We're going to do that. So V is going to be 0 because it's going to the maximum height. And then V sub 0 is 31.3 plus A, which is minus 9.8. So I'm just going to be minus 9.8 times T. So if I minus 31.3 from both sides, so it's going to be minus 31.3 is equal to minus 9.8 T. And so if I divide both sides by minus 9.8, if you go ahead and do this, 31.3 divided by 9.8, you're going to get 3.19. And so this right here is going to be the time it takes to get to the top. But keep in mind, we're trying to find total time in the air. How long will it be in the air, right? So we're trying to find going down. So this is just the time it goes up, and then we need to add it or double it so we can get the total time. So 3.19. If you multiply that by 2, you're going to get 6.38. So the total time, or your answer for B, is going to be 6.38, and then the units is seconds. So this right here is going to be your answer to B. 31.3 meters per second is your answer to A, and hopefully you found this useful.